<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. Now, speaking of smoking good stuff, how did you get... How did you find out about DMT and how did you get involved? Because I, I read something about you having these positive DMT experiences. I'm yeah. like, wow, how, how strange is it reading about, you know, this massive bodybuilder now getting into psychedelic drugs Well, um, and speaking openly about yeah, it? Yeah, first time I, I did ayahuasca was in Brazil. I met my wife who was outside. She lived in Brazil, so we went out to the Amazon. And the, but this was like 10 years ago, you know? So people weren't really... Not like now, people know what ayahuasca is because there's so much information out there. Yourself talking about it, I'm talking about it. There's a ton of stuff on the internet. Um, wasn't so much then, but I heard about it. And I heard about it. It's a life-changing experience and all that stuff. So we were out in Brazil, and we got this guide, and I asked him for ayahuasca. And he's like, bring me these two bottles of brown stuff. I don't even know to this day if it was really ayahuasca. But I just got really sick and didn't see any great revelations apart from I got this thing in my head stop poisoning yourself but the night before i'd been out drinking getting drunk and everything oh, so yeah. you know that was my experience with that then a friend of mine out, out here in california actually i knew about dmt i used to live in amsterdam and like i read the dmt spirit molecule and all that stuff so i knew about it but i had no idea to get the stuff where you can get it from and everything so a friend of mine got it and uh that was my you know first experience of like Leaving the room, so yeah. to speak, and uh, the planet. And then, since then, I had uh, some very positive ayahuasca experiences, but with a shaman and doing properly and preparing like five days of you know restricted diet and no sex and all these kind of things you do to prepare and and also afterwards. Um, so DMT is like blow the fucking doors off your perception and realize that this world we're in is like. You know, it's nothing, it's just a little illusion, right? There's so much more outside of it. Um, so there was that, but with the DMT, I think it's like you've got a computer with like so much storage space and you've got, poof, it's like a thousand times more than you can retain. So you see all this stuff and while you're there, you're like, ha, 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 I know everything. Oh, <laughs> yes. But when you come back, how much of it can you hold on to, you know? Right. Uh, so you've seen it, and that's like makes you look at everything differently. But the ayahuasca is over hours, so I feel like from the ayahuasca I actually benefited more. It was like going through therapy or something because it was much slower and I could right. digest it, you know. Right. So, um, but doing it with the shaman, uh, I did it with a guy called Guillermo uh, Avarello, and he's one of the top guys in the world from Peru. He comes to Spain a couple of times a year, so I did it with him, and. Um, yeah, it's probably, I don't know, it's probably two or three years since I did DMT because I sat down one day and I said, right, actually I fasted for two days before, so I'd be like just in the zone. And I said, right, I'm going to sit down. I've got my DMT here. i got my vaporizer here. I'm going to fucking smoke as much DMT as I possibly can to like, like, you know, to like go on and pass out. So I had that experience and since then I just, I don't, feel any need to do it. I don't think there's anything more I can take from it. You know? I've had many people tell me the same thing. They had such a profound breakthrough experience yeah. that they're like, okay, I get it. Yeah, I had a crazy one in around 2000, oh, I want to say like 2008 or nine or something like that. And I took a long time off. I didn't do it again until like five years later, maybe. Yeah, maybe, it's pretty intense, man. I mean, yeah. the, the ayahuasca is nice because it comes in nice and subtle and you go through hours of this thing, but DMT is like. Poof. Last time I and did you, and DMT, you feel very anxious when you'd like, like it's almost like you're leaving your body and you're like, no, I don't want to, and poof, you know. Yeah. So you get that bit of anxiety. But once you go, you once feel you go, okay. it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. But have uh, you done it more than one time in a day, like multiple times in a night? No, I just, you know, just blasted it as far as it could go, and that was it. I'm, I've done it several times over the course of a few hours, and. Uh, you know, you're more comfortable letting go that way in yeah. some sort of a strange way, but it never gets less alien. Well, we had a, uh, I'm not going to mention his name. I don't know his name, but we had an experience, me and my friend, a few months ago um, uh, that I've never seen before. Because usually people take DMT, they're very calm and sit in a chair and you go off and you might start laughing. But, you know, you don't move much, right? And this guy, he just like freaked out. Like, and it wasn't for 10 minutes, but for half an hour. Uh, my friend was a former 
MMA fights he used to fight with shamrocks. So he knew, he knew wrestling techniques, so he had to hold this guy on the floor to stop him from hurting himself because he oh, was Jesus. totally freaking out. So I could see the guy was going through some something traumatic from the past. So uh, yeah. today I messaged him. I was like, hey, did you ever find out what the guy, what, what, what was that? You know, because it was, he said, yeah, it was from his birth. What? It was from his birth. When he was born, he had the cord around his neck. Oh, Jesus. And he, and he went back and he, and he relived this. And like, so that had been in the back of his mind all his life, subconscious. You know, subconscious has a huge effect on us, but we don't know. It's there. So now he opened that box and let it out, and that's gone now, you know? Wow. So it can be therapeutic. Yeah, I thought this guy is like, wow, he's going to be. But when he came back, he was like, hey. I'm like, you good? He's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, do you know what just happened? He's like, no. I said, good thing we filmed it then, man. Go home and watch this. <laughs> I had a friend who freaked out, too. He freaked out. He threw up, took his shirt off, was running around saying a bunch of crazy shit. And then uh, after he came down, you know, we calmed him down. It took like 10, 15 minutes. He goes, okay, well, obviously I'm a work in progress. <laughs> I'll never forget that. But, I'll never forget that but statement. Did he, did he know what it was that was no, man, troubling was, him so much? No. Well, he had a bad childhood yeah. for sure. Well, everything is like most of our shit is from there, right? Yeah. From the developing years. No, for know? sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, in especially like real traumatic ones, abuse, uh, yeah. being, being beaten by his stepdad and a bunch of fucked up shit that was just yeah. haunting him. But, he, you know, it helps you to come to terms with that. Especially the ayahuasca, because it's longer. I felt mm. like the first time I did ayahuasca properly with a shaman, I felt like I was a different person the next day. I felt it was like I'd done 20 years of fucking therapy or something. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff I'd worked out in my mind. I could even see other people's point of view on things and that I couldn't see before. And, uh, That's huge, right? Seeing yeah. other people's point of view. Because yeah. especially a guy like you, who's so determined and goal-oriented and just cut out all the bullshit and get it done. Yeah, like, it can be a little insensitive to other people's feelings around it because you're just like, I'm right. just nothing, keep out of my way. That's Bruh. a male thing in particular anyway, yeah. right? And then add then it's like steroids to the absolute, on top of that yeah. and bodybuilding yeah. and intensity and competition and then being the best, arguably the best ever and just fucking grinding yeah. every day. Well, my no son time. said to me a couple of weeks ago, he's like, Dad, you don't see yourself as other people see you. I said, what do you mean? He said, like, I remember when I was a kid, you, first of all, the size, you know, it was fucking huge, but it's your persona. You might have said to me something very, like, normal, like, uh, you know, you know, whatever, what are you doing with a dog? Like, just something normal. And he said, and I'd be like, oh, because just your, 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 your presence made me feel like that, you know? Right. That's got to be weird when you're a little tiny kid and your dad's a gorilla. Yeah. I remember he did a... <laughs> He did, uh, he did kickboxing, right? So he got his black belt when he was about 11 or something like that. And that was my thing. I used to take him to kickbox him and, and pick him up. And he's like, Dad, can you just, can you wait outside? I'm like, what do you mean? You don't want me to come in? And you're like, can you just wait outside? I'm like, you don't want me to come? It's like, yeah, but everyone's like freaking out and looking at you. And <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got to be nice so now. I'm like, no, I'm fucking coming inside, man. <laughs> Semi-anonymous in crowds now, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, unless someone's a hardcore bodybuilding fan. Well, there's the thing. Uh, not necessarily slow because uh, because of the interviews I did on London Real. Um, and I talked about ayahuasca and DMT and spirituality and reality and all this stuff. I get so many people coming up to me like they're, n they're not from the gym. I get housewives, right. young kids. Like It's almost like you're the guy from London Real. You're the ah. guy that, you know, so I get a whole bunch of other people that appreciate what i'm saying about spirituality about reality and and life and they're like fuck man what you said that really helped me and so i got so many letters emails and stuff people you know like they just took something away from what i was saying so i mean that's that's really why i do these interviews it's just trying to help the whole general vibe and the you know put it out there and uh, there's a whole consciousness awakening a revolution going on now and i'm just want to push some dominoes you know and like create that effect and then you know if you touch one person they touch somebody else and it's like you know the butterfly wings flap here and the other side of the world is a you know yeah it really army or something it does seem to be working in that in that regard That's, right it, it is it is the time man it's the yeah. time there's so many people that are more aware now than like 20 years ago 
Isn't it kind of like, I mean, there's parallels to bodybuilding, right? That, that when Arnold first start, started doing it, there was very little information for Harley, and you guys got to see what they did and build yeah. upon that, and more information came out, and now because of the internet, there's so much information. Almost like too much information. People now. are aware more of what it's all about. Well, with psychedelics, I mean, 20, 30 years ago, there's so, so much ignorance and so little understanding. Yeah. Of, and also so little understanding, especially when it comes to something as extreme as DMT. There's still a giant percentage of our population doesn't even know what it is. Yeah, I mean, they should all take it, especially the fucking <laughs> politicians. I like to get those politicians, man, and fucking get them in a room and force them to take DMT and then see how, how they're really going to behave afterwards. Yeah. How they're going to look at the world and, and treat people after they had that experience. I don't, I don't think you can be... Uh, you know, so self-centered and unfeeling as most of them are after you've had that experience. I think that any breakthrough psychedelic experience, whether it's psilocybin or LSD yep. or DMT, there's they're all pretty much you know ego dissolving different road to the same place. Yeah. You know, well, Terence McKenna used to say that DMT is the center of the mandala. The way I describe DMT is it's like mushrooms times a million plus aliens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that it just it seems so titanically bizarre that there's like I've tried to describe it to people, but I always say, look, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to really do it. Man. Yeah. I'm going to give you some bullshit words. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna you can't try. really do it because you can't. There's no way. We don't have the words. Right. To, to, to put it into words. You know, you can attempt to. Do, I went to this place. Well, it's not a place, but right. I don't have the word for it. The place is everywhere. Yeah. It's like, and there's colors, there's numbers, there's shapes, and people. Things. things and there's like Jesters. everything is all one fucking thing and what i noticed <laughs> is like my breath was connected to it i don't know how it happened but i was in the trip and i went like that and the whole thing moved yeah. i was like really let me try this then and then the whole thing moved and then there was music playing and the music was part of the thing as well I, yeah like the thing i don't even know what to call it the Thing, the place I don't have a word you know we played a bunch of uh, these uh, shaman ikaros yeah and the, the shaman ikaros, this is the last time I did it and the shaman ikaros like literally made the DMT images dance yeah like they had figured out a way with these sounds and songs to integrate these beats into DMT trips and as you would take these trips these shamans had figured out the right sounds and songs and how to make the trip more intense and yeah. sort of guide it in a strange way. Well, that's what I had with, um, with the shaman with the ayahuasca. He comes around and he sings these acaros and yeah. then it's like changes tone and it, then it goes deeper bass in his chest and it's like it's it becomes part of it, you know. And he, I, I was even moving involuntarily. I was My arms was going up, my body was moving and it's like... I'm not doing this. I don't wow. even know how it's happening. It's like somebody's <laughs> picking my arms up and I'm moving. I was, you know, started dancing around with this becoming part of this rhythm. Wow. I had experience once, one of the first times I ever did DMT, where I saw the difference between negative and positive thinking. Like I started thinking negative and there was all this like black and dark green yeah. and like these uh, threatening shapes and colors. And then something recognized what was going on in my brain that these shapes and images were connected to negative thinking and I relaxed and the the shapes kind of like settled down and then I started thinking positive like I heard all these like I expressions of love but like you're hearing it but you're not really hearing it it's like the thoughts are getting into your head like someone's trying to say it without using words yeah. and then I started thinking positive and from those dark images Blossom these like beautiful like geometric flowers and colors and impossibly spectacularly beautiful images and I was like oh and I I I recognized in my mind there is an actual thing that happens when you think negatively and an actual it's not just some sort of an you abstract idea you affect the program yes. you're in a program yeah and your thoughts the program's coming towards you and your thoughts are going and it's interacting. With the program, you know? And that's why conflict, like interpersonal conflict between people can be so negative. It's not just as simple as you and some person getting into an argument. Yeah. It's those dark images and those negative forces. It becomes a part of your system. I had exactly the same thing. So, uh, but it was almost like a tunnel. I was in this tunnel 
and it was the same thing. It was like, Ugh. yeah, like all these images around and scary and everything. And I was like, I instinctively, I knew to be very relaxed. Yeah. And I started laughing like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even real. You're not even real. And when I said that, it went away and I just got this thing that came into my head. You've just been in the valley. Um, what's it called? The valley of the shadow of death. It's in a, the Lord's Prayer, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we walk through the, the valley of the shadow of the death. You should fear no evil because God's by the side. Right. I vaguely remember it from school or something. But I got this thing that like, you were there and you're in the valley of the shadow of death. And because you like, fuck, you were like, oh, it's not even real. It just, it just disappeared. And then I went to somewhere really nice. Wow. Yeah, I just wonder how much is real. You know, it's, it's, a, it's such a hippie thing to say. Like, how much is real? I don't know. You know, I've been having these thoughts a lot lately. Like, how much of how, how much of life do you manifest? How much of life is real? Because it's such a bullshit thing to think. It's such a hippie thing to think. And so many people that say that are so annoying. Yeah, but scientists are saying the same thing now. Yeah, well, Quantum yeah. physicists are saying, uh, what was it? I think it's the name's Professor Gates. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Professor Gates, and uh, he said that they've broken down reality into the smallest level, and it's a computer code. Yes, I've seen that guy. Not only is it a computer code, get... it's a specific computer code of zeros and ones, and it was invented in the 1940s by somebody. Yeah, I've seen that guy being interviewed. Um, we actually talked about it with Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he, uh, I tried to get him to sort of break it down and explain but what it is is essentially that when you break reality down to the smallest level, it mimics a self-correcting computer code. Not just, not just a computer code, but a computer code that's self-correcting, which is right there I just said a bunch of noises that yeah. I don't even understand. Yeah. You know, it's, just, it's gone beyond my... Uh, <clears throat> but now you're getting spirituality and science. Right. It's coming together because the scientists are saying what spiritual masters... Well, they're already telling us that we live in an illusion and everything is inside, not outside. They were saying that thousands of years ago. And but now, now some of it is real. Saying, like you have to work hard or you don't get results. Yeah. Right? Like your, your hard, fast, pragmatic reality of being the best bodybuilder in the world it w revolves around actual work, real results. In this, in this reality, yeah, in this program. But also you need to probably, do physical stuff, yeah. Probably there was a lot of mental shit going on there, too. Absolutely. The work I, was being done, but also there was probably a lot thoughts of... Thoughts all day. I mean, yeah. that's all I thought about, like yeah. literally all fucking day. So, you know, I had to have the physical goods to make it happen. I could dream about being a basketball player all day. Probably wouldn't help me because I'm not built to be a basketball player. But those thoughts were just going out all the time. And I was a kid in Birmingham industrial city in England and I was thinking I'm going to go to America and I'm going to be a bodybuilder and everyone around me was like the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah that was, was those thoughts all the time so I think it's like a holographic program we're in but we influenced it we interact with it with our thoughts that's kind of where I'm getting at now yes you know? in some way <laughs>